of the elements of this world, every little uh, entity or animal or being, um, has in itself the ability to obey God, to you know, worship Him in, in perfectly. See? As soon as they exist, as soon as they come into being, they already have the ability to fulfill the will of God. So, so the uh, beauty of creation, the order of creation that we see every day, well, we say because <clears throat> every little being obeys God. Whereas human beings, we have this terrible, difficult, and beautiful at the same time ability to choose not to obey God. So, and um, I mean, it is a good thing that we have this freedom, this ability. But at the same time, you know, we might have these other things that might influence what we think, what we do, what we desire. Like, for example, the flesh, the world, and the devil. These three things have the ability, the power to influence uh, and change our lives and make us, uh, you know, lead our lives in a different direction. Um, so, doing good or thinking well has to be a preference on our side. By nature, we don't have the ability to do that. So, that's, that's the thing. Um, so, we not only have the ability to commit sin by actually doing something that is opposing God's will, but also by thinking. So we commit sin both by thinking and by doing things that are contrary to God's will. And so that is why there is a tremendous difference between uh, the justice of men and the justice of God. The justice of men, they punish simply what, you know, what we see something that someone did. But God punishes both what we do and what we think. So, um, that is why the Gospel today, the Gospel says, um, but Him, Christ, seeing, seeing their thoughts, He said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself shall be brought to desolation. So there is nothing secret for God. He sees everything. He understands everything. So, um, so in the tribunal, in God's tribunal at the end of our lives, there is no distinction or difference between what we think and what we do. Both can be good or evil. So, now many people say, well, you know, when they come to confession, they say, well, Father, I haven't killed anyone. So, um, and that's, that's a mistake, a serious mistake. Um, because um, those sins that we can commit very easily, are those that we commit by thinking evil thoughts. So, so that, is, that is why I want to explain to you um, the ways we can commit sin by thinking and what to do with evil thoughts. Now, it is a truth of our faith that regardless or in spite of original sin, we are the absolute um, owners or responsible for our actions, both good and evil. So it is entirely up to us to choose to do good or to choose to do evil. Um, same.
So we can never offend God unless, even, I mean, we are doing something that is contrary to God's will. We don't, we cannot offend Him if we don't have the willingness to do it, to offend, to offend God. So that is why the devil, the world, and the flesh, in most of the cases, cannot do anything to force us to commit sin. The, the cause of every sin is the will. So, so no one can say, well, they, they sometimes they say, well, Father, I can help you. See, when they feel, you know, uh, pressured or uh, forced to commit certain sins. So no temptation can cause any damage unless we give the consent of our will. Now, evil thoughts become sinful, or bad thoughts become sinful in two different, two different ways. First, that if an illicit object or thought, meaning against reason and against God's will, presents itself to our imagination, then we find pleasure in thinking about it. If that happens, then we commit sin. So that's the first way. The second way is not only by finding pleasure about it, but by also being willing to do something, even if at the end, we don't have the opportunity or the means to do what is it. So that is why the Gospel says, if anyone looks at a woman with evil eyes, he has committed with her adultery. Already. So, so there are only this, there are these two ways of committing sin by thinking. So, with one simple example, you might be able to understand the whole thing easier. easier. Um, for example, someone comes to you and offends you, and you don't have the means to defend yourself, or you choose not to say anything. Then you go home, then at night, you bring back a whole drama again. So, the figure of this person comes to your mind, then you put together a whole case to you know, pay him the same way. By you doing that, you commit sin. So, even if you don't have the intention of really doing what you are thinking. So, so if we find pleasure in, you know, in doing something evil to the other person, um, even if afterwards we don't do anything about it, See, we commit sin. Um, so, and we, we can explain this with this same uh, example, any other sin or, or temptation. Um, now, we cannot say, I mean, we have to say that even after I have said this, if we actually commit the sin, we put it into effect, then the sin becomes graver more serious than simply thinking. The one who steals commits a more serious sin than the one who simply desires to steal. So, now we know how God punishes evil, evil thoughts. If you remember the, the case with Lucifer, he didn't do anything. He simply had the desire to equal himself to God. And at that very moment, he was forced to go into hell. Hell was created for him, who only committed one sin in, in his mind. Same, same thing happened with the great flood. Why the Lord, the deluge, the uh, take place? Well, simply because sacred scripture says that God seeing there the thoughts of men that, that they were inclined to evil, he decided to get rid of every single person in the world except Noah's family. 
So that's the nature of our evil plans. What, what can we do to, to deal with them, to defend ourselves from evil plans? Well, very simple. <coughs> for example, if you go to a, a Mexican restaurant, which is very typical, you see flies everywhere. So what do you do with the, with the flies? You chase them away. That's all you need to do. If you have to do that the entire day, you have to do it. There is no other way of dealing with um, evil plans. They come all the time. They come and pass. You need to let them pass by without detaining yourself in, in any way. So, <clears throat> we have the example of Abraham. God asked him to offer certain sacrifices. Uh, and so he killed several animals in an offering, as an offering to God, and he placed them on an altar. And so several, you know, types of birds appeared in the sky, pretending to take away the, uh, the victims. And so Abraham spent the entire day chasing away these birds, until at night a great fire came from heaven and consumed the whole thing. See, that's what we do. Because we want to offer to God the sacrifice of what we do the entire day. What we do is our sacrifice to God. And so we chase away whatever pretends to take away our, our desire to please Him. See? So that's the first thing. <coughs> uh, the second thing, as Hugo of St. Victor says that it is practically impossible to refrain or to stop or not to have evil thoughts if we do not uh, stay away from occasions of sin. So, so that's the first thing we need to do. To fly from, to flee from occasions of sin. sin. So um, let us do our best to resist the uh, seductions of the evil thoughts. Let us keep ourselves from finding delectation in them and from giving them consent. And whenever a bad or evil thought comes to our mind, let us uh, bring to our mind our last end. So that in that way, it would be impossible to offend God, who sees everything and who will always uh, reward what is good and punish what is evil. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.